Bruce Simon and Johnny Brandt from up in the McDowell County area. Of course, we've known both of them for years, both of them real fine gentlemen. We're going to chat with them just a little bit. And we've got the person coming in right now. We'll hand you the mic. Hello, George Simon. Hello, Brandt. How are you? Buddy, I'm fine tonight. You've got a good night for basketball. Yes, there's a large crowd here, and uh, looks like these two teams, they played at Princeton. I'll work the game as a mighty close ball game, and looks like it might be the same tonight. Well, I think all around the area this year, George, we've had some awesome good basketball team. Yes, we have. I, I've worked uh, several of those ball games, and uh, the Norfolk Princeton game, I worked uh, a couple of the Norfolk games, a couple of the Princeton games, and it seems like all of them have been close. Well, not only that, but look at the, the team talent. Now, there's a lot of individuals. Uh, there's a lot of uh, team talent around this year. Around that area, well, I'm going to see Williamson. Logan coming on strong now. Of course, North Fork Hall is strong. You've got Babysville playing well, Beckley playing well, Oak Hill playing well, Princeton playing well, Beaver looks like they're coming on. So there's just an awful lot of, of uh, good teams. One of those teams, Glenn, perhaps you left out, and that's Big Creek. They're playing awful well now. Yes, sir. I haven't seen Big Creek this year, but I know they've pushed North Fork right to the limit, and they've knocked off some of the other good teams around the area. Yes, they have. They're small, but uh, they can shoot the basketball. And, of course, uh, no matter what any of us think, this is still a team game. You've got to have five people out there. You've got to have five people play defense. You've got to have five people in the floor of the offense. Absolutely. If not, uh, you can't beat these better teams. And as an official, I know that uh, all five people involved in the offense probably makes it a little faster, a little harder on you because uh, you've got to be aware of things that could happen uh, off to the right, left, and so forth. But still, I'm sure you'd rather work a game where you got all five people on the floor of it. Absolutely. Uh, you, your partner has to really work with you whenever you've got everybody moving like uh, the better teams in the area do, such as Princeton, Green Bryce, and so on. Found a, uh, tonight where you've got, uh, uh, say, somebody like, uh, let's use the Princeton Tigers as an example. Of course, you know they're going to be taking the ball to Miller down low. And also, you know that when Miller gets it down low, most of the time he's going to be putting it to the bucket. So you'll be watching in the crowd. Now, many times, a big man puts the ball back outside. If your partner is not with you or not watching closely, you're going to be screened out of that one. Absolutely. Uh, especially down low, as you pointed out, Glenn. Simply because uh, the players are a little bigger than they used to be, and they can very easily get screened out. So that they shoot a little better than used to. They run a little faster. They shove a little higher. Yes, they do. Or why is that? Why is that? I guess uh, they practice a lot more than we did. We back young. I was going to mention probably year-round conditioning. Also, these kids play it all year round. Right. And a basketball player is a basketball player by and large. Now you get a lot of kids that do sit in double sports, but mostly uh, your kids are really excel one sport or the other. Majors in that sport. Absolutely. As you pointed out, work at it all year long. And this where they develop uh, different jumping muscles for. Of course, old George Simon back in, uh, I'll pick a year here, 1971, when you graduated from high school, uh, you played running back on the football team, you played a guard on the basketball team, short stop on the baseball team, run a little track, uh, try to do it all, and uh, you just uh, you just can't do all of that. And anymore, of course, uh, a kid like that has a little bit of distance, so the other kids are specialized. Right. But again, if a kid expects to play on a collegiate level, you almost have to do that. Right. Uh, the competition uh, is so great anymore that you must just concentrate on the one sport and stay with it year-round. Now, I'm sure that uh, you're aware, as we are, that we've got an awful lot of college coaches watching a lot of the Tiger games this year. Just as an opinion, do you think that this affects the play of the uh, players? Do you think it affects the attitudes of the crowds? Or do you think it has any effect on the, the game at all? Uh, yes, I think uh, perhaps uh, a youngster such as Miller uh, with the uh, uh, four or five college coaches around would probably upset him a little bit watching him play. Okay, while well, they play the national anthem and pause for a moment, we're going to pause 30 seconds for this message. We'll be right back. I'm Glenn Bay, and I've got George Simon alongside. George is a, uh, one of the uh, officials of the night game, and he officiates in the, uh, out of the, I guess, the Black Diamond Board? Out of the Mercer Board. And, uh, George, uh, is it because we're getting older, a little more out here, but these gyms seem to be harder anymore than they used to. Yes, this is true. Glenn, you mentioned uh, a while ago about the college coaches. Uh, let me say this as an official. Probably the thing that hurts the official, uh, Speaking about myself, is whenever you have a lot of college coaches come in to watch a certain boy 
who has to sit out a lot of the ball games that they come to watch uh, because foul trouble. But let me say this, they foul, you have to call them. Well, as an official, uh, you've got to call what you see. Right. And, uh, of course, uh, I'm sure that the different coaches will say, yeah, but you've got to be in a different position to see. And I think most of, most of the coaches I talk to, George, they don't criticize the official judgment or what he calls as much as they say, hey, you want him in the right position. You find that in the heaven, and they say, well, you want a down out of the play, you pull it from behind, you couldn't have seen it. Uh, sometimes you get that, but not a whole lot. Uh, you just normally think their boys don't foul sometimes. Well, that's true, but now, by and large, now, George, to really put it in proper perspective, over the course of the season, the Tigers now have played some 18 ball games, and if we really went back to it, we may say that officiating has affected the direct outcome on maybe, maybe two, maybe three, at the very most. Right, right. Because if you've got the talent, you can win the ball game. Right. And uh, the official is a part of the floor, a part of the game. It's got to be accepted as such. It's just like if the ball takes a bad bounce off the rim, off the backboard, or wherever. You play it the way it is. Right. And the officials are human. They're going to make mistakes, just like players miss shots. But as long as the official is calling exactly what he sees, and if he's, he's being consistent, and I think this is something that you officials really work to do, right. if you want to be consistent on both ends, if right. you're going to give them a little bit of contact underneath, you give it to them both ends, and so that both teams are playing out of the same condition. Right. And, of course, uh, this is where the, I think that we have a problem, uh, maybe when you get a team playing from one section of the state to another, that different sections of the state, they maybe allow a hand check here or there, and maybe they don't in another. Now, there's no, even though you guys are all racers, they have FSAC. Right. Different areas still have different things that you may look at. Right. Uh, well, normally, uh, John Brandt, the other official on the field, we work together all the time. And we tell the captains at the beginning of the court about how we're going to call the ball game. We tell them whether we're going to let them play a little bit or we're going to call them close. And we try to call them close, simply because we don't want the two teams to get fighting. Well, you've heard the story that basketball is a non-contact sport. Uh, you believe that? that? No, I don't. <laughs> and of course, if you look at the size of these kids, well, there's not enough room for them in that lane not have contact. That's exactly right, Glenn. But now, George, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the night game. Let's talk about the Tigers. Let's talk about Green Bay. Now, you've got here tonight two of the class coaches in Southern West Virginia, Paul Greer and Ralph Ball. Absolutely. And you know the two teams are going, as an official, you know they're going to be grounded in fundamentals. Right. So you're going to be looking for sense of commission rather than omission. Right. Right. And uh, this means that do you think it possible you'll see more offensive fouls or defensive, or is this something as an official that you can even allow yourself to think about? No, you don't think about it. You just, uh, whatever you see, you call. Well, now, you've watched the Tigers play several times this year. I don't know if you've seen Williamson, you've seen some others in other states. And, of course, we think the Tigers right now are starting to come on into their game, getting ready for tournament. We feel the Tigers have a real good shot at the state tournament and possibly going all the way. Well, Glenn, the only games I uh, get to see the Tigers play is the ones I officiate. And, of course, the, the other nights I'm working somewhere else. So uh, I really haven't sent the Norfolk game. Uh, that is the second Norfolk game, which perhaps I shouldn't remind the fans about. Well, well, I certainly that not know. Don't let them one I haven't seen Norfolk uh, play since then. Well, hey, George, it's always good to see you come down and uh, make the trip down into... Well, that's quite a trip. You live up in uh, McGill well, County. Well, well, it's good to see you. And I've, we've uh, kept on each other for several years now, and it's good to see you again. Yes. Enjoy it. Thank George you. Simon, the official nice game. And we'll be back with more first football for this. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah. The starting lineup for tonight's ball game. First, the Green Warriors with a record of 14 and 5. Uh, they are averaging 68 points a game, giving up 60 points a game. They are out rebounding their team by an average of four rebounds per game. And the starters are first, the uh, leading scorer for the team is at a forward, David Darnell, 6'3", senior, averaging 20 points a ball game. At a guard, Wilford Keyes, who's averaging 6.5 points per game. Keyes is a 5'9", junior. He hit for 14 points in the last ball game at Princeton. At a forward, Kenny Rose, 6'2", senior, averaging 5 points a ball game. And at the center is Ray Wooding, averaging 
27 points per game. He scored 12 against Princeton in the 55-49 loss at Princeton. Charlie, well, I left out the other starting play, the point guard for Greenbrier East is Scott Dolan, 6'2", senior, averaging 13.7 points a ball game. So it'll be Dolan, Darnell, Keys, and Woody and Rose starting for Greenbrier East. Charlie? Okay, for Princeton, I just think their starting point guard, Mike Keys, will be the other guard. James D. Witt and Stephon oh, Crane in the forward, and Jimmy Miller starting at uh, center. Some of the reserves tonight will be David Phillips, Sergio Harrison, Darrell Gwill. We're ready for basketball. We've got Miller in the jump against Darnell. Miller moves in. Darnell moves in. The tip is up, but it's controlled by the Tigers as Stephon pulls it down. Three and gives it to St. Clair. Jeff will bring it to the front court and take it to the right side to James DeWitt. High overhead with the D's on the high post, back outside of the width, firing off the baseline, it's off the iron, no good, rebound comes down to Greenbrier East, and pulling it down is Kenny Rose. Rose gives it out to Keyes, Keyes in the front court with it, changes hands on the dribble, the Tigers open up at his own defense. As they move it on to the right side, bring it back to Keyes, as they move it over to the right side, to Dolan, Dolan takes it toward the baseline, takes the shot, drops it underneath to Darnell. Darnell takes the shot, gives it back outside as Miller looking up on the They go high post to Rose, he fires no good. Comes back out to the Tigers. As St. Clair into the front court with it too. He's breaking, it's off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Greenbrier East as Rose controls. Gives it to Keyes, Keyes into the front court with it. Off to the right side to Darnell. Darnell gives it back to Keyes, he'll start the offense again. As Keyes, top of the key, looking underneath. And who is number 42? I don't have him on my list. As they put the bucket up and in, we got a foul. Number 42, they should be Ray Woody. Ray Woody is 52. Oh, okay, maybe you're, maybe my list is wrong. Yours is right. Well, no, I have 52 also for Woody. I got Troy Woody is 32. As we'll have on the free throw line, David Darnell, he made the bucket, and he'll have a free throw with 6.57 left to play in the first quarter. Darnell, ready to play. He fires the free throw, it's good. Three to nothing, Tigers trail with 6.57 left to play in the first quarter. As Eads with the ball in the backcourt against the press, gets it to the front court to Stephon Strain, goes to the baseline, he'll fire 12 feet, it's off the iron, no good, ball knocked loose, goes to the floor, picked up by Stolen of Greenbrier, and we've got a foul on Eads in the front court. Foul, Wilford Keyes. Did anybody ever find out who 42 was? Is that Woody? Ray Woody? That's, that's got to be Ray Woody. Okay, and it's number one on the East. Team foul number two on the Tigers. Inbound for the Spartans. Keys with the ball. To the right side with it to Rose. Rose goes to the baseline, holds it up, gets it across court now. To Dolan, goes to the corner, has the shot rejected, and gives it back outside as Darnell picks it up. Outside the Keys, back to Rose, looking underneath. Back to Keys, they go around the horn with it, firing from the other side. There's Dolan, no good off the flag. We've got a foul underneath, and it will be on Scott Dolan. As he was over the back of one of the Tigers. Now, we're sitting on the stage of the gymnasium, and the action's at the far end right now, having trouble seeing. That's foul number one on uh, Dolan. So the upcourt pass comes up to Stefan, and it's shipped out of bounds by the Kenny Rose of Greenbrier. So it'll be Tiger ball. They'll play it inbounds right here in front of us. And James DeWitt will inbound it for the Tigers. The Tigers sack it left side of the lane. As DeWitt slips in the knees in the corner, fakes the shot. Gives it back outside, top the key. As Jeff St. Clair looking underneath, on the dribble with it. Brings it back to ease on the wing, left side. They get DeWitt on the high post, turning, firing off that high post, good. As DeWitt gets the Tigers on the scoreboard, 6.02 left to play in the first quarter. It is three to two, the Tigers are trailing. As Keyes works his way towards the front court for the Spartans. Down the left side. As you'll get help over from Kenny Rose. Rose gives it right back to Keyes. Now they go on the high post with it to Woody. Woody gives it back out. Side as Keyes top the key looking underneath. Can't find anything open. They go around the horn. Now they got Darnell firing off the baseline. Stefan got a piece of it as the wit was. The ball knocked loose. The Tigers come up. The St. Clair into the front court. To the wit. Underneath the leads on the low post. He is fouled from behind. And that foul will be called on Ray Wooding. That's number one on Wooding. Team foul number two on the Tigers. I mean on the uh, Spartans. The Witt will inbound it for the Tigers. They'll inbound it on the left side of the lane as the Tigers go from a stack right side of the lane. 
Has the wit, drops it to Miller. Miller flips it back to St. Clair, drops it to Stephon on the baseline, firing, it's off the iron, no good. Miller tips, no good, rebound, Paul Lear. As the wit comes up, firing, got it. James the wit. Gets the Tigers on top, four to three. With 5.20 to play, the Tigers are pressed. St. Clair call for a foul in the backcourt. As that's number one on St. Clair, number three on the Tigers, as Wilford Key with the ball for the Spartans was fouled by Jeff St. Clair. It'll be Spartan ball out of bounds. As Keyes inbounds it to Scott Dolan. Dolan gives it back to Keyes, and Keyes will go to the front court. They give it on the high post to Darnell. He gives it right back outside. Keyes stops the key with it, looking to the right side of Dolan. He'll fire from 20. It's on the iron. No good ball. Skipped outside. Picked up by Keyes of Greenbrier. Goes to the lane. Drops it underneath to Darnell, and he calls for the charge. David Darnell on the offensive foul. That's number one on Darnell. Team foul number three on the Spartans. We've got 5.02 left to play in the ball game. And it's, I mean, in the first quarter, it is four to three. Tigers lead it. St. Clair to the wet into the front court. They go to Stephon underneath. He fakes. Two straight out of traveling call. It'll be out to the Spartans. As in running, it will be David Darnell standing right in front of us. As Darnell gets the pick and lays it inside for Scott Dolan. Dolan works it up the left side, gets it to the front court. On the move with it to the side of the key, holds it up, gives it to Keyes. Keyes on the point position, starts it into the lane. They leave him open, he'll fire from 20. It's off the flange, no good. Miller rebounds for the Tigers, speeds it out to Eves. Eves into the front court with it, no help. Takes it into the lane, fires out of the lane. It's off the iron, no good. Rebound comes down, we've got a ball comes up to Greenbrier. Darnell comes out with it. Gets it into the front court to Rose. Rose goes down. Fake gives it outside to Woody, firing, no good. We've got a foul, and it may be on Stephon. Let's see who it's on. It is on Stephon's train. It's number one on Stephon, team foul number four on the Tigers, and that will put Keyes on the line. He'll shoot two if that was a shooting infraction. So on the line will be Wilford Keyes of uh, Greenbrier East, and he fires the first of two free throws. It's no good. He got his plan, so it came off like a brick. We mentioned tonight that uh, Greenbrier East is not one of the places that Princeton uh, plays especially well at. That's true. This is a, seems to be a tough place for the Tigers to play. As Keyes fires his second free throw, and it's off of the plan. Also, rebound tipped outside. We got a whistle and a foul, and I think it is on Woody. Over the back of uh, Miller, and on Wooding, that will be foul number two. And team foul number four will be out to the Tigers on side court, back court. As Eves inbound to St. Clair, 422 to play in the first quarter, four to three, Tigers leading. As Eves brings it against the front court. They give it to the Witt, down in the corner, firing out of the corner, got another but net. Tigers go out six to three, and the Witt got all six of the points for the Tigers. Six to three, the Princeton JVs were beaten here earlier tonight, 65 to 55. As Greenbrier comes back to the offense, into the front court with it to Darnell. Darnell gives it to Keyes. Keyes moves it to the right side to Dolan. Dolan gives it to Darnell on the high post, holds it overhead, gives it to Keyes, moves it towards the right side, down into the lane, jump shot, top of the key, it's in and out, no good. Miller soaring above the crowd to pull it down. Gives it out to Eves. Mike into the front court with it. Changes the dribble to the left hand, waits for traffic to clear, sets it up to the offense to St. Clair, firing from 23 feet, good. Just St. Clair, 23 feet, puts it in. As the Tigers with a man-to-man -man face up press, as Dolan beats it into the front court. Scott Dolan to the left side, leaves it for Keyes. Wilford Keyes for the ball, calling for the play. Dribbling towards the right side, they go on the high post with it to Darnell, Darnell feeds to the right side. To Rose, Rose firing, no good, it's off the iron. We got a foul on Greenbrier underneath. As Miller rebounding, and which one's it on? It is on 42, that'll be on Ray Wooding. That's number three on Wooding. And team foul number five. Now getting off the bench and coming in, we believe it's Troy Wooding, number 32. Looking over the program, Glenn, uh, in the gold uniforms, uh, Wooding is 42, so I feel very sure that it is Wooding, 42. It's Ray Wooding. So we'll have Jim Miller on the free throw line for the Tigers. Tigers leading 8-3 to three with 3.20 to play in the first quarter. As Jim will be on the line to shoot a one and one As he's got the ball, he'll fire with that big right hand. He puts it on the way and it's good. He'll have a second one. Johnny Brandt and George Simon the officials here tonight. From up in McDowell County out of the Mercer Board. 
As Jim ready? Fire. It's good. As Miller gets his first two points of the night. Ten to three. Tigers leading now by seven. As Keyes into the front court with it to Rose on the left side. Gives it back outside to Keyes. Keyes goes around the horn with it. Gets it to Dolan. Dolan gives it back to Keyes, top of the key. They take it to the left side to Rose. Goes to the baseline. They cut him off. We've got a whistle and a three-second violation called against the Spartans. As the Tigers are giving Keyes the shot at the top of the key, and he's missed it each time, and now he's hesitant about taking it. So the Spartans in a press. As St. Clair brings it to the front court, or Ace brings it to the front court. They trap him at midcourt, and he throws it to St. Clair in the back court, and we got a backcourt violation. As it will be Greenbrier's ball at midcourt. Darnell will inbound it. Inbound it. David Darnell bounces it in to Keyes. Keyes gives it right back to Darnell and back to Keyes, top of the key with it, to the right side. To Rose, goes underneath, ball off loose, picked up by Rose. Firing, it's on the flag, bouncing flash, comes off, knocked out of bounds, it'll be Greenbrier ball. All this action taken about 300 yards away from us, way down here, and Greenbrier wants a timeout, so with 2.41 left to play in the first quarter. Preston 10, Greenbrier East 3, we'll be back right after this. <laughs> We got a little controversy here, and Bob Graham will elucidate on this and give us all the explanation. Bob, how come the Tigers two leaders are wearing red socks? As Charlie Wright stated before, we don't know. Well, oh, it's to keep their however, however, it's to keep their feet warm, fellas. Well, well they do have red in their uniform. Everybody right. have to notice that now. Well, they got those socks on to keep the shoes from wearing blisters on their feet. Well, that's true. But... Well, I think they're very becoming. Well, yeah, but are you looking at the socks? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, we have so far in this game, uh, Greenbrier is one of ten from the field, and Chris is four of ten. Okay, as Greenbrier inbounds and brings it into Rose, or to Dolan. Dolan with the ball, top of the key, drops it underneath to Wooding. We got a whistle before the pass, or the foul on somebody. Mike Eads, I believe. And it is on Mike Eads of the Tigers. That's number two on Mike, team foul number five on the Tigers, and that will put... Scott Dolan on the free throw line for the Spartans. He'll shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Scott Dolan's a 6'2 uh, senior point guard. That's pretty good size for our league. But he's playing shooting guard wing tonight. Bobby's not playing on the point. He misses the first free throw off the flange. Miller pulls it down. Puts it outside to St. Clair. Gets to the front court on the left side. Looking underneath. Brings it to the point position. And he'll fire from 20 feet. It's off the front of the iron. No good. Rebound pulled down by Kenny Rose. Rose under the front court with it for Greenbrier. He picks him up, he gives it to Wooding, and Wooding is Crawford by James DeWitt. Crawford, pretty good word on that. Crawford is an excellent head. That's number two on DeWitt. Team foul number six on the Tigers. You notice that they're putting Rose circling on the side, and Key's working the point now. They may bring you back to the point, so if Key's not shooting off the point, that Tiger's zone's going to eat him up if they don't. As we'll have, Key's on the free throw line to shoot two free throws. He puts the first one up, and it is good. That's his first of three that he's made tonight, I believe, isn't it? It's the first, uh, second that they've made out of six opportunities tonight. Okay. As Wilford Keyes on the line to shoot one more. Ten to four. Tigers lead with 220 to play. As Keyes fires, no good. Miller rebounds for the Tigers. As they double team him, he flips it out to Jeff St. Clair. Jeff brings it down, moves it to the front court. Right across the center circle, moves it to the left side. To the ease, they go to Miller on the low post, jump, fires good. Makes it look easy, doesn't it? Sure does. 12 to 4. As Wood will bring it back to the front court, to Dolan in the front court with it for Greenbrier. Gives it to Keyes. Gives it to the left side to Dolan, back outside to Keyes, top of the key. Can't take any shots, puts it to the left side, and they give it right back to Keyes. It's Keyes. Gives it to Darnell, high post, gives it to Rose, goes under fire, good. And he was fouled as a charge on Scott Dolan. So Dolan got those points in. Dolan called on the charge. And they'll shoot him. That's number two on Dolan. Team foul number six on the Spartans. And it'll put Miller on the free throw line. We get David Phillips into the ballgame for the Tigers. And James DeWitt will get out. He's got those two fouls on him. And you want to keep him away from that three mark if you can in the first half, of course. To Miller on the free throw line for the Tigers. We'll shoot a one and one. He fires. It's off the iron. No good. Uh, Phillips tips and they've called Phillips for the foul. And Phillips had to clear over top of somebody to get to the ball, which he did. And that's number one on David. 
And that's what one of the turns on the free throw line as they walk all the way back to the other end of the court. A big, long hike. Stop for a picnic lunch, and they'll put David Darnell on the free throw line for Green Bar East to shoot a one and one A minute 44 left to play in the first quarter. Preston 12, Green Bar East 6. As Darnell fires with the right hand, it is good. You'll get a second attempt, 12 to 7. Tigers lead by five. As Darnell ready to go again. Dribbling the ball down low. Picks it up. Fires. It's good. 12 to 8. Tiger lead is 4 with a minute 43 to play in the first quarter. As St. Clair brings it to the front court. Or towards the front court and into the front court on a pass to Phillips. Phillips on the wing on the right side. Looking. Drops it to Miller. Miller spinning. Firing off the baseline. Good. Miller hits it from the right side. 8 feet out. 14 to 8. The Tigers are leading now. As the Tigers will press. Keys with the ball. Gets it to the front court. Gives it back outside to Dolan. Dolan gives it to Key. They come around the other side to Rose. Rose over and overhead. Gives it to Darnell. Back to Rose. Goes to the baseline. Goes under. Runs into Miller. Backs it outside to Darnell. Darnell flying. Good. Darnell deep in the corner. 14 to 10. The Tigers lead by four. As Ease into the front court. To Stephon Strain in the baseline. As Stephon double team. Ball walks loose. Stephon picks it up. Gets it to Miller. Top of the key with it. Trying to get it to Phillips. Stop loose. Picked up by Greenbrier. Darnell with the ball. Gets it out to Key to uh, Wooding. And now to Keys and Keys into the front court with it for the Spartans. Holds it up to Darnell on the high post. To the right side to Dolan. Dolan looking underneath. Gives it back outside to Key. Top of the key. Top of the circle. Now to Darnell on the high post. Backs his way in, gives it back outside. They come around the horn to Rose. Now to Darnell on the high post. Starts it toward the lane. Turn around, jump shot. Good. David Darnell, 14 to 12, a two-point ball game. Tigers lead by two. As St. Clair in the backcourt with it. Gives it to Eads. Eads into the front court. Backs his way in. Now gives it back to St. Clair. And back to Eads. They pass it back and forth, playing for the one shot. Eight seconds on the clock as Eads goes into the lane. Drops it underneath the Phillips. Fine, we got a whistle. Traveling ball. Coming into the ball game for, his, for Greenbrier is John Campbell. As Greenbrier gets it in to Dolan. Firing from way outside. No good. Yeah, the first quarter of play, the score, Preston 14, Greenbrier 12, we'll be back right after this. Together we can make... Eight uh, minutes to play in the first half, and we've got Preston with 14, Greenbrier East with 12. What do we look like, Bob? Well, we've got David Darnell with five points, we've got Jimmy Miller with six, James DeWitt with six, and Preston had two more field goals for these, six, six compared to four. Preston was two or three at the foul line, and Greenbrier East was four of eight. Greenbrier East has not hit better than 50% of the free throws. Charlie? Okay, Preston in the first quarter, they had six of 13 for 46%. Greenbrier East was four of 14 for 28%. Preston out rebounded Greenbrier East 11 to eight, and Preston committed four turnovers compared to two for Greenbrier East. Very fine shooting in the first quarter for Preston. Awful lot of fouls called early in this ball game. How many three. fouls we got so far? Well, um, each one of them about seven. 14. Eh? 14. Okay, we're ready for second half. Fifth and four by the Tigers. The St. Clair comes out with it for Preston. Brings it to the front court. He's at the top of the key. They go to DeWitt. He's on the wing right side of Miller on the low post. Jumping, firing, got it off the glass. James Miller puts the Tigers up 16-12. Has Dolan into the front court with it for Greenbrier. Goes to the corner, right side. Drops it down low to Wooding. Firing, Miller spikes the ball out of bounds. As Wooding trying a turnaround jump shot. Sorbo whistling back and he covered up to keep from getting hit. Out of bounds to Greenbrier. As they bring it in the corner to Rose. Rose firing out of the corner is no good. Rebound pulled off by Stefan Strain of the Tigers. Gets it out to St. Clair. Up to DeWitt. DeWitt goes down the lane. Fires. Got it. We got a foul. Foul will be called on John Campbell, I believe. That'll be number one on Campbell. And that will put James DeWitt on the line to shoot one. That bucket was good. 18 to 12 for the Witt starting off pretty well here tonight. 
As James fires from the free throw line, it's off the party iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Greenbrier. As Dolan pulls it down, Dolan will take it to the front court. Holds it up, gives it to Darnell. Darnell way out high with it, gives it to Campbell. Campbell will play the point guard as they're trying to get some scoring from that point. Now, as their other keys could not hit from out there. As they drop it down low to Darnell, he's got it. Darnell on the tip end, on the pass, the alley oop. For 7 3 to play in the first half, it's 18 14. As he's with the ball, gets it to St. Clair. They go to Miller. He's on the high post, way out high. Gives it back outside to St. Clair. Jeff moves it across the key, looking toward the left side. Drops it to James Lewitt. He's in the corner, looking to drop it to Miller. And Miller thought he was shooting. A turn, and the ball goes awry. Coming out with it is Green Briar. This is Kenny Rose. Gets it out to Campbell. Campbell into the front court. Starts it to the left side. Holds it up. Brings it to the right side to, Rose, to Dolan. Dolan on the point now. To the right side to Darnell. In the corner with it to Rose. Gives it back outside to Dolan. Firing good. There's your point guard firing from outside. Scott Dolan. 18 to 16. Two point ball game. Tigers lead with 6.20 to play in the first half. Jeff St. Clair gets underneath to James DeWitt, fires, it's no good, we got a whistle and a foul on John Campbell again, I believe, underneath, that'd be number two on Campbell, and that'll put James DeWitt on the line for the Tigers, he'll shoot two shots. As DeWitt saw Campbell moving under him, DeWitt fires the first free throw, it's no good, he pulled it short, he'll get a second one. As the wit walks away from that free throw line in disgust, and Ralph Ball is out to his arch the ball. On the face, James Witt hit 76.7 of his uh, free throw shots. Princeton as a team is hitting 70 and a half percent. As the wit tries the second one, it's no good. Pull it short again. The ball pulled out by Dolan of Greenbrier. He gets it over to Keyes, who checked back into the ball game and plays to Campbell. Now Keyes ends the front court with it to Dolan. Dolan. Gets it to Darnell out on the high post firing and it's shot, the shot, the shot was blocked by Stephon and Darnell travels with the ball as he pulled it down trying to go underneath. As Stephon knocked that shot straight up in the air, Darnell recovered the shot, turned the drive, call for the traveling. 5.53 to play in the first half. St. Clair and Eads in the backcourt, now into the front court with it. St. Clair with the ball, standing out front, looking underneath. Gives it back to Eads. Eads on the left side. Goes toward the top of the key. Fires from the side of the key. It is on the iron. No good. We got a foul on Stephon underneath. That's number two on Stephon. As Stephon Strain pounding the boards. Call for the infraction. That's number two on Stephon. 540 left to play in the first half. 18 to 16. Two point ball game. You know Greenberg is tied up right here. As they will have Troy Wooding on the free throw line to shoot a one on one. As Wooding, standing down the far court with his back to it, will be firing a one-on-one. -on -one. He puts the first one up, it's off the right side, no good. Rebound comes down to the floor, picked up by Greenberg. That was almost an air ball. So Darnell firing from way outside, puts it across the plane, picked up on the other side by Rose. Gives it back outside, now Rose will fire from deep in the corner. That's off the iron again, this time he's rebound. As he brings it in traffic, into the front court, still with traffic. Holds it up, and throws it to Stephon and Johnny Brandt ducking got hit and we thought we were going to get hit and I was going to leave town fellas I wasn't going to stay here we were safe but John Brandt back yeah as Keyes into the front court with it for Greenbrier as Stephon blocks the ball back to him Keyes still with the ball to Donnell on the high post to Rose in the corner with it gives it back outside Keyes with the ball looking underneath all the time to the right side to Dolan Stops in the corner to Wooding. Wooding, one dribble, gives it back outside the keys, starts it in the lane, gives it out to Rose in the corner. Corner to Darnell on the high post. To Dolan, hitting it off the glass. Scott Dolan ties it up. 18 to 18 with 4.44 left to play in the first half. As St. Clair and Ease working the ball towards the front court. St. Clair gives it to Stephon Strain. Stephon gives it back to Ease. Ease in the front court, starts it toward the key. Looking underneath, trying to get it to Dillard. Knock loose, knocked out of bounds. And they're going to call a jump ball. As we'll have Miller to jump against Kenny Rose. Or no, are they going to put Stephon in to jump? They should. No, 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 no
about half four. Now he comes in. Tip control by Miller. Tips it to St. Clair. Jeff. Control it. Looks for traffic. Gives it to E. Z goes down to the right side. Puts it on the glass. No good. Rebound pulled out by Key. Lead pass out to Dolan. Puts it up. No good. Rebound pulled off by DeWitt. DeWitt on the dribble. Into the front court. They've got opening up here. He can't get it to him. Aziz with the ball. Comes up. Drops it to Stephon in the lane. He works. Comes to the near side. Double team ball. Not loose. Picked up the green drive. As Key with the ball for the Spartans. Head of the front court. To the left side, to Rose, double dribble, we got call on Rose. The fans wanting a foul on that. Aziz will bring it to the front court, tie ball game. Four minutes to play in the first half. Aziz into the front court to St. Clair. Way out near the time strike. Into the corner to DeWitt. Comes toward the bucket, fires it's good, and we got a foul. And we got a charging foul on DeWitt. Here's an offensive foul. That's number three on James DeWitt. Sucker was good. DeWitt's got 10 points on the night. He's had three free throw opportunities, but he's brought them all three short of the basket just a little bit. Hit the front iron. David Phillips into the ball game, and James will get a chance to rest. Carrying those three personal fouls, I guess they can tear you out, right? On the free throw line for the Spartans will be Wilford Keyes. 3.48 left to play in the first half as Keyes fires his first free throw. It's good. He'll have a second. 20 to 19, a one point ball game. Tigers lead by one. And we will have Wilford Keyes to the line to shoot his second one. Fires. It's off the iron, no good. Rebound to Miller of the Tigers. Feeds it out to Phillips, gives it to St. Clair. Jeff brings it to the front court. To Eads on the wing, on the right side. Looking underneath, gives it back outside to St. Clair. As he's directing some traffic. And he wants Phillips on the wing. He gets Phillips on the wing. Post Miller down low. Ball knocked loose. Picked up by Green Bar Eats. As Keyes with the ball. Into the front court. Starts it down the left side. Eads picks him up. Keyes goes to the baseline. And Eads knocks the ball out of bounds as he blocks the shot out of bounds. Getting into the ball game will be John Campbell. I'm Green Bar Eats. Coming out will be Kenny Rose. Greenbrier will have it out of bounds on their own baseline. They stack up on the left side of the lane. The pass comes into Campbell. He gives it to Keyes. Keyes goes toward the top of the... He gives it to Dolan. To Campbell flying out of the corner. No good. Rebound put up by Wooding. It is no good. We got offensive goal sending. It's offensive goal sending against Darnell. There's no bucket. It'll be Tiger Ball out of bounds. Ball laying on the flange. And Darnell went up and tipped it in. No question about it. 20 to 19, the Tigers lead by one, and we will have ease into the front court, and the Tigers want a timeout. So we're tied out on the floor, 305, left to play in the first half. It is Princeton 20, Greenbrier East 19. We'll be back right after this. We've got 305, left to play in the first half. It is 20 to 19, the Tigers leading by one. And Bob, the uh, bugaboo of the Greenbrier East gym is still bothering, bothering the Tigers. Well, it is. This Greenbrier's uh, team is playing an excellent ball game, they're playing. Uh, they're playing, uh, I really think, Chris is playing a good ball game, too. They, they haven't made the, the mistakes. There's been an awful lot of fouls called. If Greenbrier East ever starts hitting their fouls, we might have some fun. But James but Princeton has not hit, uh, well, there's two. Well, uh, I said the gym was buying. He's right, sir. Played some funny tricks. Now, the Chris pulled off three of his free throws short. And, either, and, he, and he really put up a couple of, he put up an air ball in the corner. Now, that tells me something is affecting him. It could be the lights. If you look up at those lights, they uh, give off a... They make the ball appear lopsided. There's a shadow underneath the ball. And you watch the players. Well, see what's the situation. See the shadow under them? How many places in the gym floor you see shadows? In what gym? Now, the bomb has the ball you can't see. I don't think. <laughs> We're ready for offense. Tigers into the front court. They give it to Stephon. Gets it to Miller down low. They four, put four men on him. Miller puts the shot up. No good rebound by Eads. Puts it up and in. As Greenbrier hits, four people collapse around Jimmy Miller. Keys will take it to the front court as the Tigers lead by three. 22 to 19. Where the ball is, Scott Dolan. Sending out front, they go to Darnell on the high post, gives it to Key, starts it toward the left side. As Stephon really eats him up on deep, that's he gets it back to the other side to Dolan. Dolan goes to the baseline, fires off the baseline, good. Scott Dolan, 22 to 21, with 2.27 left to play in the first half. As he's into the front court with it. 
to Stephon Strain, to Phillip on the low post. Gives it back to Stephon, drops it to Miller, it's intercepted, we got a whistle. And a three second foul, he's calling it the Tigers anyway. So it's a turnover, whichever way we go. 22 to 21, and the Spartans could take the lead on the side. It also broke up a possible fast break for Greenberg, he's having a three second call. As Keyes will take it to the front court. Bill Dribbling, St. Clair not Dolan down. The crowd got on to the trigger. Dolan with the ball now, standing out at this point at the wing. Gives it to Keyes, back to Dolan. Dolan goes toward the corner, trying to bounce it underneath to Wooding. Wooding gets it to Darnell, goes in traffic, puts the shot up and in. David Darnell, and the Spartans have got the lead, 23 to 22, with a minute 50 to play in the first half. As he's into the front court with it for the Tigers. Working against the double team, gets it to St. Clair. Jeff gives it back to Eads. Eads works to the side of the key. Down the left side. Still dribbling. Flips it back outside to St. Clair. Trying to get the Miller. Throws it out of bounds. And it will be Greenbrier ball. They lead the one and they have the ball. As we'll get Scooter Grill coming into the ball game for the Tigers. As St. Clair limping. Looks like a sprained ankle out there right here. As Grill is in. And St. Clair will start to check out that foot. Keys into the front court with it for Greenbrier. To the right side to Dolan. Gives it back to Keys on the left side. Into the corner to Wooding. Gives it back outside to Dolan. They go back to Wooding again. And now back outside to Keys. Around the corner to Dolan. Dolan searches towards the right side. That ball's off loose. Phillips diving court. We got a whistle and a foul. Called on David Phillips. That's number two on David. And team foul. A bunch of them on the Tigers. So it'll put somebody on the line for Greenbrier East. We got a minute 17 to play. Greenbrier leading the Tigers 23 to 22 in the second quarter, getting close to halftime. And St. Clair still looks like he's in pain with that foot or leg or ankle. I think it's an ankle. I'm not sure. As Tyring is winning on the free throw line, it's no good. And Stefan rebounds, and we've got a jump ball call as he was tied up by Kenny Rose. 234 will move into jump. One of them is Stefan Strain, the other one will be Kenny Rose. And the tip's controlled by Rose. He tips it to Eads. Flips it out in front of Will. Will on the break. Goes down. Lays it up. No good. Tipped up by Phillips. No good. we got a foul on Phillips. We have fouls for coming in court. Uh, we've got Mike Eads with three. James Swift. We've got Mike Eads with two. James Swift with three. David Phillips with three. And for Greenbrier East, we've got Ray Wooding, who hasn't been in the game for some time, with three. Dolan with two. And Campbell with two. Phillips already got three. As, uh, Jeff Adams will come into the ball game now for Phillips. And going to the free throw line will be Wilford Keyes for the Spartans. 23-22, the Tigers trail by one, a minute 11 to play in the first half. As Keyes fires, it's good. 24 to 22, the Tigers trail by two now. We got a minute 11 to play. And Wilford Keyes on the free throw line for the Spartans. Fires. It's good. 25 to 22. And the Spartans will press as Will gets the ball to Eads. Eads in the backcourt with it. They double team him. Gives it to Miller. Miller way out front. Gives it to Will. Eads with it into the front court. Eads dribbling. Takes it toward the left side. 35 seconds to play. The Tigers down by five in the first half. As Keyes moves it to Dolan. Dolan goes toward the corner of the right side. Adams sets him off. He goes underneath to Woody. Puts it out on the near side to Campbell, and we've got a three-second violation against Greenbrier. And the Tigers will have the ball trailing 27 to 22. There's 23 seconds to play in the first half. As these will bring the ball toward the front court. They trap him to the back court. He gets it up to Stephon. Stephon to Miller. Goes into the lane. Fine. Got it. Miller. Gets the Tigers within three, 27 to 24. As Dolan takes it to the front court for Greenbrier. Holds it up, Adams picks him up on the defense. Back to Darnell. Darnell goes down the lane, fires, got it off the glass. With one second, it's the halftime. At the end of the first half of play, the Greenbrier East Sports, 29. The Preston Tigers, 24. We'll be back right after this. 29 to 24, the Tigers with 14 points in the first quarter, while Greenbrier had 12, so the Tigers had a two-point lead at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, the Tigers came back and only get 10 points. Greenbrier exploded for 17, and so the halftime scores, Greenbrier East 29, Princeton Tigers 24. We'll be back with that first football for this. 
Okay, Bob, you ready on some individual sets? Well, I sure am. We've got Mac Marshall along the side. We're going to talk to him in just a couple of minutes. But first, the stats for, for Greenbrier East. Uh, Scott Dolan has three field goals, six points. Wilford Keyes, one field goal, four of eight from the foul line, six points. Ray Wooding has one uh, has no points. He did not score pick up three fouls early. Kenny Rose, one field goal, six points. David Darnell, who's averaging almost 20 points a game, or averaging 20 points a game, Pick up six field goals, three for three from the foul line, 15 points. Troy Wooding came into the ball game, missed his only two free throw opportunities. Greenbrier East had 11 field goals, seven of 14 from the foul line, 29 points. For Princeton, Mike East had one field goal for two points. Jeff St. Clair, one field goal, two points. James DeWitt, five field goals, 0 for three from the foul line, 10 points. Jimmy Miller had four field goals, two of three at the foul line, 10 points. Giving Christian uh, identical 11 field goals, identical with Green Bay, 11 field goals, but instead of 7 of 14, Princeton is 2 of 6. We're hitting just roughly a third of the free throw opportunities in this first uh, half of the ball game. And we'll go to Charlie Wright with his uh, team set. Okay, the first half showed that uh, Princeton made 11 of 23 for 48 percent. Green Bay East made 11 of 30 for 37 percent. Princeton now rebounding Green Bay 18 to 16. But the big key here is uh, Princeton committed 12 turnovers compared to six turnovers for Green Bay East. Green, uh, Princeton made eight turnovers in the second quarter. Bob? That's very tough. So we're going to be back with special guests. First, Chris Falls for this message. We're back for the halftime activity at the Green Bay East High School. Green Bay East leading at halftime, 29-24. They took over the lead in the ball game with a minute and 53 seconds left in the second period and extended it out to the five-point advantage that they have at this point in the ball game. They had a five-point advantage twice in the last two minutes of the ball game, and a couple of times since we cut it back to three, but at halftime it stands at five. We have along with us Mac Marks, and Mac is sort of a summer tradition down here to uh, talk with Mac Marks when Princeton comes to Green Bay. Of course, you're from Princeton, and first we'd like to welcome you aboard and give you an opportunity to say hello to your mother and father. Thanks a lot, Bob. I would like to say hello to my mom and dad, and I'll be home tomorrow for my dad's birthday. Birthday tomorrow. Okay, Mac, let me ask you a couple of questions about this Green Bay East uh, basketball team. The season so far for Green Bay East has been kind of an impression. You might want to elaborate about some of the individuals playing for Green Bay East and some of the games that they've had, the losses, the wins, and who you've played this season. Well, Bob, uh, it's been a pleasant surprise this year for several of our ball players. The only experienced four we had back this year that had any varsity experience was David Darnell. David has really come on this year, and uh, as you can tell tonight by the way he's playing, he's really, uh, he's really blossomed into a fine senior basketball player. Our other kids uh, who've come along this year uh, with not a lot of varsity experience was Scotty Dolan. Uh, and our point guard, I think, is the key to our ball club right now is Wilford Key. He's really come on, and uh, he's really directing the ball club now. And uh, with his leadership out there, uh, it's, it's made us a much better ball club. And then our inside people, Ray Wooding, has had some good games, and he's had some so-so games. He, he's up and down. And then uh, Kenny Rose has come on in the last four or five ball games. He's got a lot more confidence in playing. And uh, he's starting to gel in and fit in with the ball club. And then we have one boy comes off the bench, Troy Woody. Troy, at times, does a good job, and other times, you know, he just doesn't do that well. But uh, we're well pleased with where we're at right now. Okay. We'll be back at Green Bay East High School after these minutes. This is Bob Graham back at Green Bay East High School with Mac Parks alongside. Green Bay East leading 29-24 at the half. And Mac Parks, uh, let me ask you a couple of questions about basketball in the southern part of the state. Now, from our point of view in Princeton, it appears to us that basketball is really up. But in the area, the whole area, Green Bay East back in all those teams, how does this season compare with other seasons that you've seen in this area, southern West Virginia area? Well, I don't think it's as strong as it has been in the past. However, this year, with Williamson having a good ball club, considered to be in the southern part, Norfolk, again, solid as they always are, especially with a good ball club. 
Oak Hill with a good ball club. Uh, Princeton with an outstanding ball club. Bluefield can be tough at times. And, and you know, we got a pretty we got a pretty decent ball club for Triple A. And then you go into Kanoa Valley and there's some teams down there that are tough. So I'd say the southern part of the state is dominant right now over the northern part of the state. Let me ask you a question about something that will be coming up uh, later on uh, after the regular season. That's the sectional tournament. And I know there's an awful lot of McCann and Usher uh, jackets outside. Is McCann and Usher in your sectional and who all is in that sectional or region? Well, McCann and Usher will be in our region and they'll probably come out of their section. And we'll probably come out of our section. Hopefully we will. And we'll meet again like we did last year. Now, they beat us four or five points last year in the regional to advance to the state. And this year, we're hoping that we can return the favor. Who are the other teams in your region? I mean, in your section. In the sectional, we'll open with Nicholas County on March the 10th. Braxton County through the bye. Braxton County, Nicholas County, and Green Valley, Triple A section. The, uh, well, of course, Princeton, the sectional down that way starts March 7th. Princeton through the bye in that, and we'll not play until the 10th of March or the 13th of March, I'm sorry, and uh, they will play the winner of the Bluefield Mountain View game. What do you expect to see in the second half of this ball game, mate? Well, i tell you, Bob, uh, our 2-2-1 two -two press has bothered Princeton some, and uh, Miller, when he gets the ball, he's going to score. There's no question about it. And right now, I don't... Uh, uh, I didn't see E shooting the ball as much as he normally does. I look for Princeton to come out and maybe put more pressure on us, try to force us to play a faster game. Well, we hope that uh, Princeton is able to come back in. And so far, Green Bay has played a, a great ball game, and it's been a very closely uh, tall ball game. Uh, the neither team is really uh, hitting a great ball. Both teams, Princeton is hitting a third of their free throw opportunities. Takes it towards the front court with a left-hand dribble. Toward the left side. 
Looking underneath, gives it back to St. Clair. St. Clair on the right side. To the wet, deep in the corner. Looking inside. Drops it to Miller on the post. Spinning jump shot. Got it. Jimmy Miller gets the Tigers within one now with 6.52 to play in the third quarter. 29 to 28. As Spiller posted on that low post, they got him the ball. He got the bucket. As Campbell, his keys into the front court with it now for Greenbrier East. Moves it toward the near side. Still dribbling out there. St. Clair playing the defense on him. As trying to get the pass to Campbell, deflected out of bounds by St. Clair. It'll be Greenbrier ball. Still playing in the front court right in front of Coach Paul Weir. As John Campbell will inbound it for them. Holds it overhead and gets it into Dolan. As Scott Dolan. Started by Mike Eads, gives it back over to Wilford Keyes, comes toward the lane. To Darnell, deep in the corner, right side, fakes the shot, sees Miller going up, decides not to shoot it. Gives it back outside to Keyes, ball knocked loose to St. Clair, loose on the floor, picked up now by Dolan, firing off the iron, no good, rebound point for Miller, cut it. Gives it out to Jeff, as St. Clair will clear to the front court for the Tigers, as he cuts across in front of Darnell. Holds it up, gives it to Miller, out on the high post, trying to drop it underneath to step on it, and if it goes out of bounds, it'll be Greenbrier ball. 29 to 28, the Tigers trail by one with 6.06 to play in the third quarter. As Wilford Keyes will bring it to the front court for Greenbrier. To the left side to Campbell, holds it overhead. It's help from Darnell as Darnell comes out on the high post. Now they flip it over to Campbell. They come back to Darnell, firing from the wing. It's good. David Darnell. We got a whistle and a foul underneath on somebody. On Ray Wooding, his fourth. And it is on Ray Wooding, his fourth. Okay. And that be team foul number two on the Spartans here in the second half. 31 to 28. The Tigers trail by three. Aziz will inbound to St. Clair. Jeff will take it to the front court. Starts it toward the right side. Gives it to... Mike Eads, they're still on the back court. Now they flip it to Miller, way out on the high post. Give it to Jeff St. Clair, quarter court. To DeWitt, firing out of the corner. It's on the iron, goes good. Rebound comes down to Darnell. Darnell. Gives it to Campbell, they get it to Keyes. Keyes will bring it to the front court. 5.45 to play. As Keyes works it to the near side to Campbell. Campbell holds it in the corner, gives it outside to Darnell. They come around the horn with it to Keyes, looking underneath. Tigers in a man-to-man defense. Campbell with the ball in the corner. He picks up his dribble and gets help from Keyes. It's Keyes. Takes it outside and gets it to Dolan. Dolan gives it back to Keyes. Keyes comes to the baseline, looking underneath. They're trying to pick and roll, couldn't get it to work. Gives it back outside to John Campbell. Campbell takes it around the horn. Stops the key as St. Clair closes going from behind, makes you pick up the dribble. So now the Tigers play the defense to make him hold the ball. And we've got a traveling as the Tigers play a sticky man to man. Made him move the pivot foot. We were off for close to a five second call off, but who come into the ball game? Somebody did. Ray Wooding, I believe, is going out. Okay, uh, Greenbrier East wants a timeout, so with 4.48 left to play in the third quarter, it is Greenbrier 31, Princeton 28. We'll be back right after this. In person, any way you look at it. Well, that went on the air. I guess uh, you're saying it's your sweet. Just that I'm on Bob. Oh. Bob is an unsalty person. Okay. Now, when I was in As service... compared to what? When I was in service, salty meant um, something akin to... Um, uh, well, I don't want to say a smart one. Like, different. Well, different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Ease will inbound it for the Tigers in the backcourt. They get to the Jeff St. Clair. They go to Miller in the front court. And we got a whistle and a foul. Somebody closed underneath the Miller. They call, they call the charge on Miller. Sorry they about. sure should have. It was Campbell. Miller up in the air to get the pass. And Campbell went under him, and Miller fell over top of him. Number one on Jim. That's number one on Jim. Team foul number one on the Tigers' second half. And boy, Ralph Ball is, boy, you see, he's really going to talk about that one. Time out to the Tigers. 4.41 to play. 31-28 Tigers trail. We'll be back. Right after this. Okay, we break the huddle and it'll be Greenbrier East Ball out of bounds. All that talking didn't change anything. It's still Greenbrier East Ball. 31-28, Tigers starting by three with 4.41 left to play in the third quarter. As Campbell will inbound it. 
as he gets it into Dolan. Dolan into the front court with it. St. Clair diving after the ball. Dolan picks it up, fires, puts it on the short iron. No good. Rebound comes up to St. Clair. And there we got the makeup call. <laughs> as Wooding sets up and calls for the foul on St. Clair. That's number one on Wooding. That's number three on the Spartans in the second half. Now that one's right in front of us. DeWitt inbounds it to St. Clair. Jeff will take it to the front court for the Tigers. Four and a half minutes to play. Ease with the ball on the left side now. Drops it in the corner to Stefan. Goes underneath to Miller. Clams up. And now look, they cut under him, and Miller grabs the rim to keep from falling. And they pull the foul. Let's see what they call. They slammed up by Miller, who could. And we've got a charging call on Miller. I can't That's believe impossible. It. And now there's a technical on Miller for grabbing the rim. I can't believe what they're doing to him. No, because Jimmy, there was no one had to say Jimmy went up. He did grab the well, rim. The guy went under him, but Jim would have killed him or killed himself if he hadn't have. And now they put the points over on Greenbrier East side of the place. <laughs> I think we'll have to correct that. What is the score? 33 to 30? Should be 31 30, Glenn. 31 30, okay. Uh -huh. And we're going to sign out somebody over there. So while we're got the argument going, on, let's pause 30 seconds for this message. We're 33 to 30 right now with 423 to play in the third quarter. And now they've got 31 up there for the visitors. Somebody better talk about Sporky. I don't know what's going on. I don't think they know what's going on either, so I'm not even worse off than they are. It was 29 24 at the half. Greenbrace has one bucket, that's 31. Princeton has six buckets, that's 30. Now they're changing it. They got Princeton showing with 30. They've got 31 at preference Greenbrier East. Okay, now we'll have David Darnell on the free throw line to shoot a technical free throw. He fires. It's no good. So now Greenbrier East had the ball anyway. So the technical's for naught. So the technical doesn't count against uh, Jim as a personal. Jim is really fired up. Look at him out there. But I did they call a foul on Jim for charge? No, I don't know, did he? I think he did. It was a charge, yeah, they did. So he's got two personals and one technical. As the Tigers play the defense, Keys into the front court with it. Still dribbling. In the corner to Campbell. Campbell looking underneath. Gives it back outside to Keys. They come to the near side to Darnell. Dribbling back his way toward the baseline. Gives it back outside. And now Campbell comes into the lane. Should have a three-second violation. We got a traveling call instead. 2 left to play in the third quarter. It's 31 to 30. The Tigers trail. As St. Clair with the ball in the backcourt for the Tigers. Takes it toward the front court to the width in the corner. They drop it to Miller on the low post. Miller, they double teaming, spinning, firing. He got a traveling call on Miller. Now Miller put the ball on the floor. He sure did, huh? 3.52 to play in the third quarter. 31 to 30. As Keyes into the front court with it for Greenbrier. To Darnell, works it toward the corner. Stefan hits him off. Gives it back outside to Keyes. Works it toward the lane. He'll fire him the side of the lane. It's good. From 16 feet, Wilford Keyes. As the weight inbounds it for the Tigers. And Eads will move it toward the front court. He's on the left side, directing traffic. Gives it back to St. Clair in the midcourt, in the back court. They go to Miller in the front court. Back to St. Clair. He's in the front court also. And now we got a whistle and a foul underneath on somebody. Jimmy Miller for an elbow. What happened is that number 32 yeah, was it's on 32, I believe. Are they going to call it on 32? Yes, sir. It's on Troy Wooding of Greenbrier. Well, it, I'll agree with it. I thought they had got Jimmy on the second. Jimmy's just Wooding, Wooding was behind him, pushing Jimmy. Jimmy went down the court and sort of gave him a little elbow, and I thought they caught him for the elbow. So it's out of bounds for the Tigers. It's away with the ball. Gives it to ease. Drives the lane. Goes under. Puts it on the grass. Got it, and we got a foul. As he's laying flat on the floor right there, who's that foul on? The bucket is good. And the foul, called on 32 again, I believe. No, it's on 40, 44, 20, Darnell. Darnell, that's his second. So that'll put ease on the free throw line. 33 to 32, the Tigers on top, and that's team foul number four on the sport. Tigers on top by one, with 3.14 to play in the third quarter. He's on the free throw line for one, he fires, it's good. 34 to 32, the Tigers take the lead. Well, check it. No, that's 33 to 33. I'm sorry. I gave you the wrong score. The Tigers were trading by one. Tied up. 3.08 to play. As 
The tip up by Green Green goes up and then Campbell gets the bucket. John Campbell gets the follow-up bucket for Greenbrier as they came down quickly. 35 to 33. Tigers trailing by two. St. Clair gives the ball to the wit. Goes toward the lane. Fires off the iron. No good. Rebound comes down to Keyes of Greenbrier. Keyes moving into the front court with it. They hit him off. He picks it up. They double came him. Gets it back outside to Wooding. Wooding waits for help to come to him. Still looking. Now he dribbles. Comes to the lane. Trying to get it to Darnell. We've got a traveling call. It'll be Tiger ball. And it's lucky we got there because the ball went out of bounds off of Miller's foot. Coming in the ball for Greenbrier East. Will be a guard. If he turns around, I'll get his number. Number 10, that will be Dale Witt. As DeWitt inbounds it to St. Clair. St. Clair gives it over to Eads. Eads into the front court with it to DeWitt. In the corner right side. Goes to the baseline. Picks it up. Gives it across court to St. Clair. Firing from the left side. Off the iron. No good. Rebound. Pulled down by Darnell on Greenbrier. 35 to 33. The Tigers trail. As Witt with the ball for Greenbrier. Brings it to the front court. On the left side. Holds it up. And throws it loose into the backcourt, and Darnell thought, uh, and we've got a backcourt violation. <laughs> we had a, we'd had a rule block called against Mike Eads. That's reminiscent of Sullivan North. Excellent block. Yeah, it was. Put him on the floor. Put him here. Jack, you can review that videotape. So just St. Clair into the front court now with it. Into the lane. we got a foul on Witt as he hacked him across the wrist. That'll be number five on the Spartans, number one on Witt. And that'll put St. Clair on the free throw line. He'll shoot a one and one. We got 2.06 to play in a wild little really third quarter, and who knows what's going on. I'm sure that some of the people running the game here don't. As St. Clair on the line now, he'll shoot a one and one. 2.06 to play in the third quarter. Jeff fires. It's good. 35 to 34. The Tigers are trailing by one. As Jeff standing on the line, they're waiting on the uh, ball. As Johnny Brand giving some kind of instructions to both teams. And St. Clair ready to fire again. He puts it up. It's good. Tie ball game, 35 all. With 2.05 to play in the third quarter, the Tigers will press. John Hill with the ball. Throws it up court. St. Clair's got it for the Tigers. In the front court with a D. Firing off the baseline, off the iron, no good. Rebound goes to the corner. We've got a foul on St. Clair. Number two on Jeff. Team foul number three on the Tigers. It'll be out of bounds to the Spartans. As they were coming up here to let him shoot. And Jeff St. Clair looks over at us and says, I didn't do it. <laughs> As Witt with the ball. They all went with the ball for Greenbrier. Gets it to David Darnell. He's in the backcourt. Tigers playing man to man. They bring it up to John Campbell in the front court. As Campbell out toward the center circle, tie ball game 35-35. Campbell still dribbling with the ball. Brings it across the top of the key, picks up the dribble. And the Tigers shut the defense down. Now he leads it underneath for Ray Wooding. Wooding fires good. Boy, Wooding it was. Not Ray, I'm sorry. Wooding puts the Spartans up by two. 38-35 as he spreads his way to the front court for the Tigers. The strain on the baseline. The St. Clair to the wet on the baseline. Other side, the wet firing good. The wet. Gets it back for the Tigers. 37-37. We've got a tie ball game with a minute 12 to play in the third quarter. As Witt gives it to Darnell. Darnell will bring it to the front court. The pivot man working out front. Picks up his dribble. Gives it to Campbell. Campbell comes down the left side. Gives it back outside to Witt. As Witt comes around the corn. Looking underneath. Can't get anybody open. Gives it outside to Campbell. And Campbell. Builder puts it on the floor, starts to dribble, they get Darnell on the high post, and they get the back door open to Dolan, puts it up, it was blocked by Stephon, Darnell comes up with it, and he is hammered by Stephon Strain. That's number three on Stephon, team foul number four on the Tigers. Well, that could have very easily been against James Witten, if it had been, it would have been his fourth. But we came out of that one about as well as we could have. They didn't get yeah. the basket. They hammered him pretty well. Coming into the ball game, the... Well, for Keys, for Greenbrier East, Dale Witt will sit down. Darnell's going for uh, his uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th points in the ballgame. He's got a bunch tonight. 45 seconds left to play in the third quarter at 37 to 37. That's Darnell on the line. He shoots, he 
He fires the first one. It's good. He'll get a second one. Well, he would have had it anyway. The two shots foul. As the official hands in the ball. As Darnell fires, it's good. 39 to 37. As Eads with the ball for the Tigers. Moves it up the left side, waiting for him to trap him at the midcourt line. Gets it to Stephon's train down low. They go to Miller on the high post. Miller holds it overhead. Now he'll fire from the lane. It's off the plan so good. Rebound for court brought down by Greenbrier. As Campbell brings it out. Gets it over to Keyes. Keyes into the front court with it to Dolan. They drop it underneath to Darnell. It's tipped out of bounds by Miller. So Greenbrier will play it right in front of us. As they'll sack him on the left side of the lane. As David Darnell will pull the trigger. He gets it into Dolan. It's tipped loose by Stephon and knocked out of bounds by Stephon. Now they'll play it on the left side on the side court. As they inbound it to Keyes. Keyes starts it toward the lane. Forces a shot and we got traveling. As St. Clair was all over. And it'll be Tiger ball out of bounds. They trail by two, 39 to 38. 19 seconds to play in the third quarter. As Eads works it toward the front court. Camilla on the high post. Gives it back to Jeff St. Clair out front. Jeff gives it to Eads. Eads starts it into the lane. Drops it to Stephon on the baseline. Stephon trying good. 39 to 39. Now with four seconds to on the clock. As Dolan firing from midcourt for Greenbrier. Hits the glass and downs the way. At the end of the third quarter of play, we've got a tie ball game. 29, I mean check at 39 to 39. We'll be back right after this. We're ready for the start of the fourth quarter at Greenbrier East High School. And as of this point in the ball game, Princeton has 17 team field goals, Greenbrier East 15, Princeton 5 is 9 at the line, Greenbrier East 9 of 16. Call it. In the third quarter, Princeton 6 of 11 for 55%, Greenbrier East is 4 of 10 for 40%. Greenbrier out, rebounded Princeton in the third quarter, 7 to 3. And the turnover, 3 by Princeton and 6 by Greenbrier East in that quarter. The big thing in that third quarter is we made up a five-point difference and we're going into the fourth quarter even. Yeah, they outscored a 15-10 in the third quarter. We're ready for the fourth quarter. The Greenbrier comes out with Wilford Keyes, Troy Wooding, Scott Dolan, David Darnell, and I think it's John Campbell. It is John Campbell. The Tigers come out with James DeWitt, Stephon Train, Mike East, Jeff St. Clair, and there comes Jim Miller. We'll have Jim Miller in to jump against David Darnell if they start this quarter like they have all the other. Right? Right. Darnell's in the center circle. Miller standing outside. He moves in. And now the official. And the tip. The call by Darnell. He hits the ball on the way up. The call by Greenbrier. As Keyes with the ball. Gets it to Dolan. They go down low with it to Wooding. Wooding holds it up. Goes around. Fires over Stephon. Got it. Wooding. Put Greenbrier East up by two, 41 to 39, with 7.47 to play in the ball game. Jeff St. Clair with the ball, top of the key, dribbling with the left hand, looking underneath, gives it to Eads, Eads in the corner, drives the baseline, goes under, backs his way out, they hit him underneath, he put it up, we got a traveling call, but there was contact made, but not enough to necessitate the foul call. 7.36 left to play in the ball game, and the Tigers starting by two, Greenbrier East with the ball. As Wilford Keyes dribbling with it, brings it to the front court to Dolan. Dolan on the left side. Works it toward the baseline. Works it back toward the key. They double team him. He gets it to Keyes. Firing from the left side. Good. Keyes. Hits it from about 17 feet. 43 to 39. The Tigers turning by four. As Eads gives it to the Witt. The Witt are checking it to St. Clair. Back to Eads. Eads holding it overhead on the wing. We got a whistle underneath. A foul call on somebody. I think it should be on Greenbrier East. to see the call. Number four Wooding, I believe. Number 32. It is right. That's number three on Wooding. Team foul number six on the Spartan. That'll put Miller on the free throw line. As they're really squeezing Miller down low. And Miller will go to the line to shoot a one-on-one. 7 9 left to play in the ball game. 43 to 39. The Tigers are trailing. Miller fires. It's good. He'll get a second one. 43 to 40. The Tigers trail. As Miller fires again. It's good. 43 to 41. Two-point ball game. As Keyes with the ball, gets it to Darnell. They're in the backcourt. Tigers are pressing. 
Gives it back to Keyes. Now to Darnell into the front court to Dolan. Dolan comes to the baseline. Comes all the way under. Leaves it near side to Campbell. Jumps. Fires off the iron. No good. Rebound to the win of the Tigers. As the win. Wait for it to clear out. Gives it to Jeff St. Clair. The Tigers will go to the offense. And Jeff into the front court with it. Eads on the wing. Left side. Drops it to DeWitt. DeWitt drops it to Miller. High post. Moves it down underneath. It's not loose. And we got a three second call against the Tigers. As Miller being double teamed, trying to get the ball down low to step on. Had the ball knocked loose. The Tigers call for a three second violation. 43-41. The Tigers trailing by two with 6.37 to play. And we've got the ball knocked loose to St. Clair. St. Clair call for the foul. And on Jeff, that will be number three. Team foul on the Tigers is number five, so they'll shoot it. And it'll put John Campbell on the free throw line for the Greenbrier East Spartans. As Campbell standing on the line to shoot with the right hand, he fires. It's good. 44 to 41. The Tigers trail by three with 6.36 to play in the ball game. As Campbell fires, it's good. 45 to 41. Tigers trail by four with 6.34 to play in the ball game. As St. Clair into the front court with it, 6.30 on the clock. Six and a half minutes to play. Eads with the ball, deep on the baseline. The Miller on the low post, goes around, hooking off the lane, no good. Rebound, comes out, front four, picked up by Greenbrier East. As Keyes with the ball. Moves it toward the front court now for the Spartans. To Darnell on the right side. Works his way in and rams into Miller. We got a charging foul on Darnell. Offensive foul, number three on Darnell. And the Tigers will have the ball. Trailing by four points with 6.14 to play in the ball game. St. Clair into the front court with it for the Tigers. Driving with the left hand, gets it to Miller out on the wing. Miller goes into the lane, turn around, jump shot, good. Miller hits it as he puts keys on the deck while well, he did it. 45 to 43. As Dolan back into the front court with it for Greenbrier. They double team him down low. He gets it to Darnell, puts it up and in. David Darnell puts Greenbrier back on top. 47 to 43. As he's into the front court with it for the Tigers. Dribbling out front. To St. Clair, back to Eads. Eads on the wing. Gives it to DeWitt. DeWitt firing from the high post. It's off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Darnell of Greenbrier. As they get it to Keys, and Keys into the front court with it to Dolan. Dolan on the left side. Will fire from 18 feet off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Wooding. Gets it out to Campbell. Firing, no good. Rebound to St. Clair in traffic. We got a foul on Campbell. That's number four on Campbell of Greenbrier. Put Jeff St. Clair on the line. He'll be up for the shoot one-on-one. We got five minutes, 21 seconds to play in the ball game. It is 47 to 43, and the Tigers are trailing. And Jeff St. Clair will shoot the one-on-one. Pretty much full house here at Green Bay East for the ball game. And St. Clair ready to fire. It's good. He'll have a second one. 47 to 44. Tigers trailing by three now. With 521 to play. And St. Clair ready to fire again. He fires. It's in and out. No good. Rebound pulled down by Greenbrier East as Dolan pulls it down. Dolan gives it to Keyes. Keyes in the front court with it. Works it toward the left side on the dribble. Gives it to Campbell. Campbell on the dribble out front. Comes across the top of the key with it. Looking underneath. Tigers into a man-to-man -man defense. Leaves it for Keyes. Keyes works his way toward the baseline. Gets the pick. And we've got a traveling call as they sit his foot slid. He drug his fist at the clock. Five minutes to play in the ball game. 47-44. Tigers trailing by three. And St. Clair into the front court with for the Tigers. Left side of the key. Holds it up to the wit. The wit. Out on the wing. They go to Eads on the high post. Eads firing. Got it. Eads from 16 feet. 47-46. The Tigers trailing by one. 440 to 444 to play in the ball game. As Campbell works it towards the front court. They double team him. He gets it to Keys. They get it underneath to Dolan. Dolan goes all the way under. Trying to drop it to Darnell. Taken away by Jeff St. Clair. But now three-second violation calls. And Greenbrier East wants a timeout. 
So with 434 left to play in the ball game, it is Greenbrier East 46, Princeton 40, check it, Greenbrier East 47, Green, Preston Tigers 46, we'll be back right after this. As the Tigers serving by, or serving by one, and we have the ball, with 434 left to play in the ball game. Fellas, if we're going to win it, we're going to have to take the lead somewhere along the line. Yes, sir. It's in the next four minutes, then we're off. Well, I have, you know, as long as we get the next four and a half, I'll take a four seconds. Yeah, there you go. Greenbrier <laughs> has had a tie or the lead since the minute 53 of the second. Johnny Prince, that comes down this way, acts like he's sweating. I don't think he is. <laughs> As James DeWitt inbounds it to Jeff St. Clair. Jeff will take it to the front court for the Tigers. Right across the center circle. Moves it to the right side of the width. The width looking underneath. Gets it to ease. He's in the corner, deep in the corner. Holds it overhead, gives it back outside of the width. They come to St. Clair on the point. Looking underneath now. Back to the width. The width on the wing. The ease in the corner. Firing off the baseline. It's off the iron. No good. Rebound pulled down by Darnell. Gets it out to Dolan. He gives it to Keyes, and Keyes will run the offense. He brings it to the front court. Keyes brings it right down the pipe. Puts it to the right side to Campbell. And Campbell dribbling with it out front. Gives it to Keyes. To Dolan. Dolan gets a pick from Darnell. Comes around him. Fires. It's good. Dolan from 20 feet on a pick. 350 to play in the ball game. 49 to 46. The Tigers trail. And St. Clair to the wit on the right side. The wit feeds on the high post. Looking underneath. Gives it back to the wit. The wit dribbles one time. Drops it underneath to Stefan. Firing. Got it. And Stefan was cut from underneath. But he got the bucket. 49 to 48, Tigers trailing by one. As Dolan with the ball, back to the way to the front court, gets it to Keyes. Keyes comes toward the lane to Campbell. He'll fire from deep in the corner. It's off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Wooding. He double team him. He gets it out to Dolan. St. Clair knocks it loose, picked up by Keyes. Keyes gives it back to Dolan. And St. Clair knocks it loose again. St. Clair comes out with it this time, gets it to the wind in the front court. As he picks it up, firing from the side, it's off the iron, no good. Rebound to the wick, goes under, fires again, and he's got that one. We've got a foul or something. As there's bodies all over the floor, and maybe on... Uh, John Campbell, number 14. John Campbell. And if it is, it's number five on Campbell. Number 14, I believe you're right. Let's see, and they're getting somebody off the bench, number 34. Kenny Rose will come back in. And the bucket should have been good, had to be good, because it was way in front of the whistle. But now they're going to call a timeout. So the Tigers want a timeout. So it's 3.04 to play. 49 to 48. The Tigers trailing by one the way the scoreboard reads. Now they're putting it up. Now they're putting it up. Okay, the Tigers lead now 50 to 49. We'll be back right after this. I knew that. Check him on the side of the head there a little bit. Okay. Now that is, uh, now that was changing up there again. But now it's, we don't know if it's four or five fouls on Campbell. We say five. The uh, Tigers scorebook says five, but the home scorebook says four. And oh, what are they going to do? They just erased it off and it, huh? He's out of the ball game. Okay. And we'll get Kenny Rose back in the ball game in place of him. 50 to 49, 304 to play. The Tigers lead by one. Now this should be a one and one free throw since I think it'll be uh, will it be the winner St. Clair going to free throw line. The win still won't be one shot then. But now 14 did not foul the win. He fouled St. Clair. Yeah, I think he did. Well, you know he did. He's over on the baseline. Right, that's what we talked about there. So it'll be. The wet on the free throw line if you want to throw. Well, you win one, you lose one. Yeah. The JVs were lost. I'll be here tonight, 65 to 55. The wet fire, good on the free throw. 51 to 49. Tigers lead by two. We got three minutes and two seconds to play. Darnell with the ball. Gets it to Keys. Keys into the front court with it. It's kicked by the Tigers out of bounds. It'll, <laughs> it'll be Greenbrier ball. I think Jim kicked it out of bounds. He said, hey, it goes the other way, doesn't it? <laughs> They had 5, 13 and a half, we'll put it up in the seat. So Wooding inbounds it to his brother, Wooding, and they give it back outside to brother Wooding again. We've got Troy Wooding and Ray Wooding. And Troy Wooding with the ball. Gives it to Dolan. Scott comes around the left side. Drops it underneath to Wooding, and Wooding picks it up. Gives it back outside to Dolan. 
Dolan. Gives it to brother Troy Woody. Goes into the lane. Fire shot. It. Good. 51 to 51. Tie ball game. As each will take it to the front court. Gives it to St. Clair. Jeff moves it to the point position. To the right side to Eve. Gives it back to Jeff. Top of the key. They come around the horn with it to the wit. Now they drop it to Miller. Low post. They triple team him. He fires. Got it. Miller puts the Tigers up by two. 51, 53 to 51. Two, 16 to play in the ball game. As Darnell will bring it to the front court for Greenbrier East. Gives it to Keyes. Keyes out front with it on the dribble. To Woody. Woody hands it to Dolan. Dolan will come to the near side. Dribbling, coming in around Keyes. Holds it up, gives it to Darnell down low. Fires the fadeaway off the iron, no good. Ball's not loose. And if St. Clair comes out and grab it, and he works. Picks up his third personal foul, and that will put Wilford Keys, I believe, on the free throw line for the Spartans, and he'll shoot the one on one. As Keys on the line, a minute 51 to play, 55 51. Tigers lead by four. As Keys fires the first one, it's off the flange, no good. Rebound to Miller. As Jim clears it out and gives it to Eves. As Eves will take it to the front court with a minute 45 to play. He's out front with it. Gives it to St. Clair. St. Clair moves it toward the left side. Still dribbling with it. Behind the back dribble. And traffic goes toward the lane. Gives it outside to Mike Eves. The Tigers working the clock a little bit. He's out front with it. Gives it to DeWitt. DeWitt comes around out top. Gives it to St. Clair on the wing. Way on the right side. Gives it back outside. Mike Eves with the ball. A minute. 23. On the clock as he's standing out front with the ball. On the dribble and traffic now. Leaves it to Jeff St. Clair as Jeff starts it toward the left side, still dribbling, gives it back to Mike Eves. Out toward the center strike, looking for help, gives it to the win. The win on the wing right side. James takes it toward the corner, dribble around the circle, gives it back outside to Mike Eves. A minute and three seconds on the clock as he goes to the top of the key. A minute one to the win. The win. As they move it inside, one minute, DeWitt throws it all across court. Stefan picks it up on the deflected pass. Stefan gives it to Eves. Eves in heavy traffic. Moves it outside to Jeff St. Clair. Works it toward the baseline. Goes under, lays it up with the left hand. Oh, it doesn't drop. We got a whistle and a foul on Jeff St. Clair with 44 seconds to play as Darnell rebounded. St. Clair going under at full steam. Put the ball up with the left hand. He hung it right on the flange and the side of the iron and it laid there for an eternity and then fell off. That's foul number four on Jeff St. Clair. With 44 seconds play, the left to play in this ball game, Princeton 55, Greenbrier East 51. We'll be back right after this. There's only been two lead changes in the ball game with a minute 53 in the second period. Greenbrier East took the lead. They held that lead or at least the tie until 3.04 left in the fourth quarter when Princeton took the lead and with 44 seconds, Princeton leads 55-51. However, Green Warriors will be at the line and we still have 44 seconds. Turn that sheet over and read what's on the other side of it. In the JV game tonight, Princeton lost 65-55. They led most of the ball game. It was a tough uh, loss for them. Rusty Harris had 12 points. Jojo Harris from 11 points. And Troy Clemens, 12 points for the Junior Varsity Hunt. 55 to 51, the Tigers leading by four, but David Darnell will be on the free throw line for the Greenbrier East Spartans. He'll be shooting a one on one. The Tigers out there with Jim Miller, Jeff St. Clair, Mike Eads, Stephon Strain, and James DeWitt. David Darnell has hit five of five from the foul line, and Princeton just called a timeout. As the Tigers going to ice the shooter here just a little bit, so with timeout on the floor, we'll be back right after this. Not anyway, isn't it? <laughs> an, easy, an easy dunk parallel to the floor. Yeah, as we're looking at the gymnasium here in Green Bay, it's just a fine physical facility. We just disagree with the lighting system. Well, I think that's always been the uh, complaint. Now, if you notice, the, the lights in the spectator section are different from the lights over the court. And well, now, the lights in the those. spectator sections are too dark. If you could park up there. Uh, yes, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty dark there. Especially on that top row. We still need a whole lot of lights, but sir. You know, down in the in Greensboro, when the game starts, they turn the lights down. It's like sitting in the balcony at the movie when you, used to, when you were a kid and you stood the movie, huh? Yep. The old folks of the Yep. Do you think Bob's ever a kid? Was he ever grown up? Well, I don't really know. 
really know. He's the kid at one time, man. Any more games like this? He gets excited. He gets excited. I gained two years and four months in that Northport game. 55 to 51, Tigers lead. David Darnell on the free throw line right now for the Green Valley Spartans. The scooter will end the ball game for the Tigers. Step on out. And Darnell on the line. Scooter one and one. Tigers talking to him. He fires. It's good. You look at David Darnell, but I'm telling you who he looks like. They look good enough to your left, Will. Your left, not your right. Got the left? Uh, Darnell fires again, it's good. 55 to 53, two point ball game, 43 seconds to play. As the wet with the ball, throws it up to Miller. Miller into the front court with it on the dribble, holds it up, the ball loose. They got a dog fight on the floor, and Miller really got hit, he got bit. And Miller's really upset sitting on the floor. I think he got bit. He says he got bit on the ear, and I think he's here might be bleeding a little bit. It is. He's sitting out there holding it right now. now I've heard about things like that in football games, but it's the first time I've heard Wait, wait a minute. Wait, hey, you might have gotten here in a football game. Oh, well, let's just say I've heard of some eye gouging, nose gouging, throat gouging. And if they can find a way to do it, it could be done. I'm sure. But the guy would have a little bit of a, a, a incisor bite problem or <laughs> for a helmet come off. Now we'll have a jump ball as we'll come down and step on the back end. Let's have a Republican ball play. <laughs> 36 seconds left to play in the ball game. Miller moves into jump against Campbell. It tips and pulls over the Tigers. He tips it to the wit. He gives it to E. Z's on the wing right side. As they crowd him, we got a foul. They don't stop the ball game. That foul fall on Wooding, I believe. No, maybe on... I had on number 32, Floyd Wooding. Okay, I think you're right. It'd be number four on him. But now 14th back in, John Campbell. And the foul, I think, was on John Campbell. Now, that's the second time that lad fouled out tonight. <laughs> foul actually should have been on Floyd. Um, Campbell's kind of small about getting back into the ball game. Hmm. I had him with five fouls. I don't know. Somebody's got one more than I've got him for then. 31 seconds to play. We've got 55 to 53. The Tigers leading. We'll have Mike Eads on the free throw line for the Tigers to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. 31 seconds left to play in this ball game. Coming into the ball game will be Terry Sampson. Now, luckily, he's not anything like Ralph. <laughs> he looks like he's about 5'10". down the free throw line for the Tigers. Puts the first one up. It's good. And the fans get out it pretty good, but he drops it on the with no problem. 56-53. Tigers lead by three. And the Tigers want a timeout. So with 31 seconds left to play in the ball game, Princeton 53. Greenbrier East. Check it. Princeton 56. Greenbrier East 53. I'll be back right after this. And I haven't seen Jim Mitchell, but I have seen Nelson and Ben. Sammy Barker is here. And Nelson I think we Gazzini probably should say hello to Jim Mitchum, who is probably uh, working at this time. Jim, stay with us. We'll pull this thing out for us sooner or later. I bet, he, I bet he's had an elongated coffee break. What are you on bet? <laughs> Near the radio. That coffee's the week now with his tears and if he can't drink it. <laughs> Talking about salty, you told me I go, but it's coffee salty, but not. <laughs> All right, Eads will be back at the free throw line for the Tigers. He'll shoot one more. It is 56 to 53, and the scorekeeper getting the score wrong, I think, was messing me up here all night. 31 seconds left to play in the ball game. Mike Eads with one more try. As Eads goes to the line, they hand him the ball. He'll put it up with the right hand. He fires, dead center. 57 to 53, as Dolan with the ball for Greenbrier. Into the front court, holds it up. Hands it to Darnell. The keys drives to the lane, fires, it's off the iron, no good. Stephon's got it for the Tigers, he clears it out. This is the St. Clair, we got a foul on Darnell as he fouls Stephon. That's number four on Don Darnell, and there's 19 seconds to play now. And Stephon was clear there, and he was clearing out the timber there when he came out of that ball, wasn't he? Sure was. We're sitting right in front of the basket. If he swung that elbow any harder, he'd got Graham right over top the eye. <laughs> But I'll, it should be actually, I think, a two-shot foul at this point because they, they wanted to foul whoever got that ball. 19 seconds to go down to four points. They wanted to foul. So Stephon on the line. He fires. It's in and out. No good. Rebound to Darnell or Greenbrier East. 
holds it. And he gets it to Sampson. Sampson gets it to uh, Ray Wooding. Firing no good. Rebound to Dolan. Not close. Hit Running the for the out of bounds. And it is out of bounds off of Greenberg. It'll be Tiger Ball. The ball was kicked uh, by Dolan. The official didn't see it. The Tigers will have it out of bounds with six seconds to play. 57 to 53, the Tigers lead as the end to He's in the backcourt. He's just standing there with it. And he's got two seconds, and we've got a jump ball with one no, second. Now, now, wait a minute. You are not supposed to be able to have a jump ball in the backcourt. Five seconds, that's right. Hey, there that's is the no five-second call. That's right, he missed it. However, <laughs> we're jumping the ball. We're jump it, though. And Ralph Paul says, hey, you can do that. There is no five-second call in the backcourt. You got one second to, to play. Eads the jump against Wooding, Troy Wooding. Tip control by Eads, picked up by Miller. There's the buzzer, there's the ball game. At the end of the ball game, the final score, the Princeton Tigers, 57. The Greenbrier East Spartan, 53. We'll be back right after this. Yeah, the four quarters, uh, 14 points in the first, 10 in the second, 15 in the third, 18 in the fourth, for a final score of 57. The Spartans had four quarters of 12 in the first, 17 in the second, 10 in the third, 14 in the fourth for a final score of 53. Final score, Princeton 57, Greenbrier East 53. As the band fires up, final score of the night, Princeton 57, Greenbrier East 53, as the Tigers take that record out to 14 and 5 on the season. As the, now the Tigers will be in action next Tuesday night. Independence will be in for the last home appearance of the Tigers this year. Then on Friday, March the 6th, next Friday night, a week from last night, will be in Williamson to take on the Wolfpack in a return match. The Tigers victorious here tonight as we're working on stats and what we've got a chance. This falls 30 seconds for this. Okay, what we got? You ready on team stats, Charlie? Sure am. Game total show for Princeton. They made 23 of 45, 51% from the field. Greenbrier East made 20 of 52 for 38 percent. Greenbrier East out rebounded Princeton 30 to 27, and both teams committed 17 turnovers. I think it's a very fine shooting night for Princeton tonight. They made a lot of turnovers, or uh, both teams made turnovers, so it's a uh, very fine shooting, I thought. Well, Greenbrier East got seven more shots than the Tigers did, which was a big thing in the factor that kept them into the ball game. And uh, the number of field goals, the Tigers had what, how many? Uh, 
Moore trying to turn this thing away and now trying only to uh, turn the mic towards you like that so it'll get okay. Now see if he can do something with it. Okay, points for the Green Bay Ace Martins tonight. David Darnell, 23 points. Wilford Keys, 10 points. Scott Dolan, 8 points. Kitty Rose, 2 points. Paul Wedding, 6 points. John Campbell, 4 points. Giving them a team total of 20 field goals, 13 and 21, 53 points. For Princeton, Mikey, 3 field goals. Three for three from the foul line, nine points, and the band just quit. Jeff St. Clair, one field goal, three or four at the foul line, five points. James DeWitt, eight field goals, one or four from the foul line, 17 points. Stephon Swain, two field goals, 0 for one at the foul line, four points. And like I said before, Stephon had his baskets when they really uh, were essential for the Prince Nephew. Jimmy Miller, nine field goals, four or five from the foul line, 22 points. Jimmy Miller, 22 points on the evening. The high score in the game, David Garnell with 23, Clinton 23 field goals, 11 of 17 from the foul line, 57 points. And Glenn, I'll let you holler along. Okay, the Tigers uh, playing uh, under pressure, not one of their best efforts for the season, but they played uh, when they had to. The winner is Ralph Ball coming around right now. We'll try to get him up here. And, and of course, they kept the uh, lead chase. Once the Clinton held the lead from the beginning of the game to 153 to go. In the second period, lost the lead, had a five-point disadvantage at 29-24 at halftime. Then with 3.04 left in the fourth quarter, Princeton took the lead for good. The score had been tied in between a couple of times. But with 3.04 left in the game, in the fourth quarter, Princeton took the lead and went on to win this ball game 57-53. And we're getting Coach Ralph Ball with a headset. And we will be with him in just a second. And Glenn, are you ready? Yeah. But so without that headset, there's no way you can hear me that band playing. Coach, congratulations on a big win. But the, the Tigers came out and then, uh, just like Greenbrier East wanted to control the tip ball, and the, the Tigers played in sports tonight. Is this maybe a popular little bit of a letdown from the hard effort they had Thursday night? Well, Greenbrier does have an excellent ball club. And again, I said earlier, it seems like we never seem to really play our best up against Jim Mason for some reason or other. And the, uh, the Tigers, though, uh, was able to pull it out and run the record out to 14 and 5. And uh, when, you, when you look at the schedule they played, I'm sure you're pretty proud of that 14 and 5. Oh, yeah, I told you first year we win 15 ball games would be a heck of a year. And, and we, we've got two to go and we've got to win at least one of them, hopefully both of them. Well, we'll plan on taking both of them just for the heck of it, but the Independence coming in Tuesday night, the Independence will surprise you. Independence beat this very, very easy. They're a big ball team, right? They're big, they're strong. The biggest green bar is to make great good basketball. Well, early in the season, we were looking at the record, and somewhere in there, uh, green bar East, or Independence beats green bar East for three points. Yeah, that was over at uh, Independence. Was right? that Independence? I, I don't know where it was, but it's, uh, <coughs> it's surprising uh, because uh, the Greenbrier East will come in, and of course, Doug Basham will have a well, real well coached team. But coming back to the game here tonight, the uh, Tigers came out and had a lead at the end of the first quarter. And then uh, things started going a little bit of a rise. It seemed like we came up on the wrong side of some calls and so forth. We lost some momentum. Went in at halftime, five points down. And when you're playing against a team that you could expect to slow it down at any time, what do you do when you're five points down? What do you tell them? Well, we we, went, we changed the man man defense of our players, and that was a big difference, I think, in the game because they didn't play as well against the man to man as they did against the zone. I think you're right on that man to man in the uh, fourth quarter. The Tigers committed five turnovers, meanwhile, 14 11 from Greenbrier Green East. Right, I think that was a big difference. Our kids really hustled and played good defense the last half, and that was the difference. Uh, everybody played good defense. The Tigers had uh, three more field goals than Green Bayes did. Uh, of course, Green Bayes had two more for free throw line. But the Tigers shooting uh, 23 out of 45 for 55% or 51%. That's a pretty good shooting night overall. Yeah, I have to say it was a good ball game, well played ball game. Both teams hustled, and uh, we had to go all the way to win it, and it was down to the wire. I'm going to ask you a question. I don't mean to put you on the spot and talk about a fish thing like that. But it, does it seem to you that we're getting many more offensive fouls called this year than ever before? Well, seemingly, uh, the rules wasn't meant to be that way. The people seem to be taking advantage of it and trying to 
build reaction, a little fog and setting up and things like that. We do some of it, but uh, we might do more of it. Uh, some of the teams make a habit of it. Well, now, in the second half, we got a call. It's a little hard for us to go, but when Jim went in and Slam dropped the ball, the kid went under him, Jim came down on him, and to keep from hurting the kid, Jim grabbed the rim. Now, the kid went under Jim if he went into the air, we thought. And we got Jim got called for a charging foul. He got called, called for a technical. Yeah, I thought it should have called, but the referee said that he ran over him before he got in there. Well... <laughs> Whichever, whichever it was, it, it kind of hurt us, but at the same time, that really fired Gemma pretty much. He came back down and really, at that point in time, the Tigers really picked up the defensive tip on. Sometimes as a coach, you're really looking for something that will get them fired up, and it's hard to find at times. Right, and uh, they really played hard and was fired up, and like I say, it was an iron, hard, earned victory when we had three of them this week, and these kids are to be commended to win three ball games this week against three good ball teams. Well, not only that, but uh, the kids have got to be tired. Because right. they, Beckley had Northwork at Greenbrier East. They were, uh, well, and Beckley, they, they run hard and played very hard. But against Northwork, they were extended just to the last ounce right. of endurance they had. And here tonight, they had to give out to the last ounce again. The kids will sleep well tonight. Right, and uh, Greenbrier East just worked out so they didn't have a game this week. This was the only game they had. So they could, you know, prepare for us for the total week and get ready for us. Now, ordinarily, you play at least on Tuesday and maybe have a day or two to get ready for somebody, but we had one day to get ready for them, and they had five to get ready for us, so that helped them, I would say. I'm sure it did, and I'm sure that uh, they saw the Tigers play uh, Thursday night also. I feel sure they did, and uh, I can say it was a hard-earned victory, well-earned, and I'm proud of the kids for coming through. You and I were talking the other evening, and we were talking about the Tigers' schedule. Now, the Tigers today have played 19 ball games. Now, all the teams on that schedule, with the exception of Boundview and Independence, have been rated in the respective top 15 of their state at one time or another. It's been a very difficult schedule. And that, that makes it a little tough on your kids to continually, like this week, you got North Fork on a Thursday night, a very, very tough ball game, coming right back to the Greenbrier East. And by the way, Greenbrier East has now lost uh, five games on the season. They lost Oak Hill three times. They've lost, they've lost six games. They've lost Oak Hill three times to Princeton twice and the Independence once. Six games, right. And that's, you know, they're very tough. And you look at the uh, schedule they play, they played the Covenants and Virginias, which are large schools and so forth. And so they better not count the uh, Spartans out of being upstate when they come. And their region is not as strong as ours. Oh, that's true. Uh, they or Buchanan will come out of this region, no doubt about it. Um, one of the two of them, and they'll be upstate. It's not a very difficult region, and um, seemingly uh, year in and year out, not as like ours, or maybe Williamson. We got, they got a tough one. We got a tough one. So it's hard to get up. There. Well, we got, we got a tough one to get into the region. Right. Because now Bluefield extended the Tigers to a one point lane win, and of course people said, well, that's one time. But now Bluefield also took Northport down to a five point win. Right. And now Bluefield is capable of representing this section if things go right for them when they need on a given night. Of course, Mount View is improving. See, they played a bunch of young boys and. They were trying to get ready for the tournament and ready for next year, and right now they're playing their best ball of the year. Yes, if Mount View gets a big back in the racehorse game, Mount View could be sure be sitting on top of it. Yeah, they won a couple games this week, right? Yeah. The Tigers now will be in action Tuesday night against Independence. Of course, you remember Independence. They've got big size underneath, and they've they got speed. They didn't shoot real well against us over there, but the shooting is something that comes and goes. They come into Princeton and shoot well. You could be in another dog fight. Yeah, they're big enough to shoot well in Texas. Yeah. Trump, the Tigers 14-5 on the year, a fine job here tonight, and I know that uh, there was time in that uh, third quarter that you felt about as frustrated as we did about some of the things going on. There's nothing you can do except help the, hope the kids can work it out. Yeah, our kids stayed with it, tied them up at the end of the third quarter, and came on one by, what, four? By four. Final score, 57-53, but the Tigers did not take the lead until 3.05 to go in the ballgame. Coach, we want you to play interesting basketball, but don't you think that's going to get a little close? Yeah, it's not easy on anybody. Which <laughs> <laughs> is Bob said you're going to get out to a 50-point lead in the first half of coach. Yeah, be nice. Be okay, Ralph, thanks for stopping the visit with us. There's a long trip home, and uh, wish you well. We'll talk to you Tuesday evening. Right. Congratulations. Coach Ralph Ball with Preston Tigers, winning the, taking the Tigers to 14-5 record overall on the season. And uh, Bob, we got you sitting alongside, and you got the final comment. Well, that band is banging away over there. 
Well, uh, I think the most important comment is that this has been a tough season. There are no easy teams. It doesn't get any easier at Independence. When Independence comes into Princeton, I think we do need a big crowd there. We also need a big contingent from Princeton in a place called Williamson that they tell me things get a little rowdy. They also put on slam dunk shows, I understand. And uh, this game tonight, uh, in the Greenbrier East played a good game, but uh, not only have we got a good team, but when Princeton comes in, they're the big boy on the block this year, and everybody gets up for us. It's been an exciting season, and um, there's no doubt about it. Perhaps more exciting than I'd like. I'd just as soon seen Princeton come in and play Parkersburg uh, 20 times. Well, no, I don't want to see him play Parkersburg 20 times. But I enjoyed that ball game. Okay, Charlie, your closing comments. I agree with Bob there. It seemed like every, every game this season, uh, everybody seemed like they get up higher for Princeton than uh, basically, you know, everybody else. Maybe that's not true, but uh, I just think so. that's why we have so many close ball games, I think. I think both teams played a good ball game tonight. Uh, surprisingly, to me, Princeton shot very well here tonight. Princeton didn't shoot enough, though. <laughs> okay, Tigers victorious, running the record after 14 and 5 on the year as they take the Spartans into camp by a score of 57 53. I'm Glenn Bay speaking on behalf of Bob Graham and Charlie Wright, saying we appreciate the fact you've allowed us to be a part of your evening. The fact of the matter is, we say thanks so much for listening. Good night, all. <laughs>